Hey everyone, Ashish and this side from Innovate Yourself. Welcome back to another exciting video in the series of ESP IDF. Recently, I saw one video after watching which I was totally blown away. And what was the reason that why my mind got blown away? Let me show you that video so that we can come to that point. So, see this video. X-rays and infrared goggles, now that spy camera vision is real, researchers at CMU developed tech that sees people through Wi-Fi. They use dense pose, an AI which maps all the pixels on the surface of a human body in a photo. Then a custom neural network mapped Wi-Fi signals sent and received by routers to coordinates on human bodies. So it detects 3D shapes and movements of humans inside a room with a Wi-Fi router. The team believes this could replace standard security cameras because it's cheaper equipment, more accessible, and overcomes obstacles like low lighting. My only question is... So... After watching this video, I was totally blown away. Now, just because I was curious to know, like, what's the exact thing what's happening in here? Because they are not using any camera right now. They are just using the Wi-Fi router and that's it. Now they can simply detect you. They can simply track where you are right now in your, basically, your room or at your place. But how is that possible? This simply shows that now they can do spy on us as well. But what's the technology that they are using just to achieve this? So we should also be uh, aware about this. And that is the reason why I'm here to explain you all about this. So after Googling all about this, I found out one article, which I will definitely share the link in the description. So you can check that. And that is related to the CSI, which is channel state information, which is basically for the, which is basically the property for your communication link. And I didn't get much understanding about this, to be honest, but I got some point which I am definitely going to demonstrate you today so that with respect to this, you will be able to simply detect an object or you can say you can simply detect the motion of a person and that I am going to show you today. And that concept which I have got an idea about is about the strength. And what is the strength? The strength is basically the connection strength of your Wi-Fi and the router. Basically, normally, if you have already worked on the routers or on the Wi-Fi connections, you must be knowing about the term RSSI, which is basically the connection strength of your uh, connected device to the nearest router. And I am going to use this concept today that how you can detect an object in your room or at your place. So this is all that we are going to cover up today. Now let's move ahead and let's understand the connections of your ESP32 as well as the coding part so that we can achieve the final functionality that is the main agenda for today. Now let's move ahead and let's understand how do we do it. So let's go. All right, everyone. So now you can see that here is the connections of your ESP32 with the LED. So currently we are using one LED just to demonstrate the detection of a person or an object. And for doing that, currently we are connecting the uh, LED positive terminal to the pin number 19 and the other terminal to the ground. Currently, I just connected it directly. That's the reason I'm not using any resistor. But if you want, you can use a resistor along with this so that you can make a final circuit out of that. Right. So currently this is the final connections and that's it. So let's move ahead. All right, everyone. So now let's understand that how are we going to make this motion detector or object detector with respect to only the ESP32. For that, I am going to use the coding uh, and that coding I have uh, taken from the example itself and that is fast underscore scan, right? Uh, if you don't know like from where I have uh, get this, you can simply go to the uh, main uh, directory of your ESP IDF in which you have all the components, documents, uh, examples and all. So inside that go to Wi-Fi and then inside over here we have this fast underscore scan. So just take this out and I am going to modify this code so that you will understand that uh, how are we going to make this uh, object detector or you can say the motion detector, right? So uh, let me go to the code. Okay. So now fast underscore scan, this is the code which is by default in here. 
and what does this code doing is that this code is going to simply take uh, the credentials from you right and that credentials is your SSID and password basically so this is uh, what we have provided similarly the scan method and the sort method and the RSSI threshold and authentication method so all these things all these configurations we have set up for the Wi-Fi in the station mode and uh, those all things we are putting in here and with respect to this configuration your ESP32 will be connected to the nearest uh, Wi-Fi or you can say the router for which you have provided the credentials. So in this way this is going to connect to the uh, router and accordingly this is going to display the IP address generated for that. So this is basically the code for that. Now the concept here is that we have to uh, detect that whether there is object in between or not and how are we going to do that for doing that we are simply going to use a very basic concept that is there in uh, ESP32 or let's say after connecting to the network and that is RSSI right so you can see in here also I have set up the threshold value as RSSI I mean threshold value of RSSI and I have set some value for that and that is minus 127 right so this is what we have set in here now what does this RSSI mean basically in simple terms if you will talk we can say this RSSI is the strength of your Wi-Fi connection right so basically if I am talking that ESP32 is connected to the router now in between this we can say we will get a value of RSSI and depending on the location of your ESP32 from the router whether it's near to the router or whether it's far from the router in both the cases the value of RSSI is going to change and depending on its change we can identify that there is some change in the ESP32 right and uh, that change is in terms of distance whether it's coming closer to the router whether it's going far from the router right but in our today's scenario we will first make an assumption that your ESP32 and your router is stable they are not changing anywhere right now after that a person will enter inside right or let's say a person will enter the path uh, like connecting these two router and ESP32 and depending on that we will get a value of RSSI by default there will be a fixed value of RSSI and when some person will enter definitely your signals are going to penetrate depending on the object depending on the human uh, which is coming in between and based on that your value of RSSI is going to change this will simply signifies that there is some person in between that is the reason this value uh, has some change in it right and this simple concept we are going to use today just to identify that there is some object or there is some human being in between that's the reason we have this change so on the basis of that we can simply do some tasks that we want to do with respect to this detection so this is all that we are going to do now let me start writing up the code uh, for this basically so for this I'll have to write up a code so you can see basically this is a function uh, that I have written in here right so this is a motion detector function which I have created in here with some parameters and I am simply starting up a loop and that's an infinite loop in here and in this I am simply going to get the STA uh, access point information from which I can get multiple values but I don't want all the values I just want the RSSI apart from that what all values we have I will show you that either right so we will see that once I'll upload the code because currently it's not showing to me but that's fine so in this way you can see RSSI is the value which I am collecting from there with respect to that there are many other values so depending on this RSSI value I'm simply setting up a condition that if the strength because I'm taking this as a variable and that variable name is strength and if the value of strength is less than minus 60 now currently this value is going to vary depending on like uh, the location of your ESP32 from your router so we can change this value so it's possible that in my case also I'll have to change it right so 
uh currently let's leave it to minus 60 and once i'll upload the code and depending on that i'll check like what's the strength what's the value that i'm getting i'll change that accordingly right so this is what i'm doing and for representing that whether everything is working fine or not or what action i can take on that i have simply used one gpio pin and that is gpio number 19 and on that i'm connecting one led which i want to simply glow for two seconds and uh, accordingly it will simply change to zero when the signal strength got reverted right so this is what exactly i'm gonna do or simply we can say when there is a motion detection it will simply be turned on and it will continue this process until and unless we will have this condition satisfied this is how exactly we are doing it right and uh, to set up this thing we also have to set up like uh, uh, uh the set directions for your gpi open and also we have to call the uh library for that so this is the library and similarly let's go down and uh, let's simply uh set up this okay so in this way we have done this right and in this way we have simply defined that we want to use pin number 19 and we want to use it as an output and similarly we have created this function but yet we haven't called this function and secondly this function is some infinite loop so i cannot run it directly uh, because it's gonna enter this loop and after that it's not gonna perform anything else right and i don't want that thing to happen so that is the reason i want to run this function in the background and for that i need free rto so that i can call the x task create function from there so that i can run it in the background so let me do that either so just call them you can see we have it here free rtos now it's time to call this function x task create just type this right so basically this is the function that i'm gonna use this is some heading this is the space and all the things these are all the parameters that i have passed in here for this x task create now once i'm connected to the network it will simply start this function so when this function will start it will start checking up the signal strength and on the basis of that it is going to turn on the led connected to pin number 19. so this is the thing that we have established in here right and that's all for the uh, coding part i hope you have understood this now let's upload the code and let's see like how the things are going to happen So the code is uploaded and uh, now you can see uh, it is connecting to the network. So finally it is connected to the network and now you can see we have simply got the strength as 67 uh, dBm, right? So in this way we have got it and it looks like by default I am getting this value. So I need to change this or let's say I need to change this in the coding part or if you will try to get your ASP32 closer to your uh, e uh, router then in that case it's gonna work so you can make the changes in here according to your requirement right but in my case I think this is gonna work because I was already having the disk in between so that's the reason it is uh, creating this problem right now let's move ahead and let's understand like how it is working in actual so let's see the demonstration all right everyone so now you can see we have the strength value on the screen and currently we have the camera set up for the router and for the esp32 now i will move in between them and let's see how the value is going to fluctuate with respect to that right so i'm coming forward so you can see the value is decreasing a little bit more when i am coming in between the esp32 and the router and similarly when i'm going back the value is getting a little bit more right but currently you can see the value of led is not changing just because uh, the value is not uh, meeting the threshold so that is going to meet when i'm coming closer to the esp32 
so you can see now the LED is turning on and when I'll go back the LED will be turned off so this is how the things happen so this was it for today I hope you have liked this video and if you have liked this video do click on the like button and if you are new to this channel and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet do click on the subscribe button so that you will not miss any videos from our channel and also if you have find this video valuable and you want this video to be shared with everyone so that they can also get aware about this technology then feel free to share this video with as many people as you want and this will be a great support from your side to us just to show your love towards us so this was it see you on next video with the most exciting topic see you on next video till then bye bye and happy learning bye bye take care